Hi, what's going on guys? Dan Watson, and hope you guys are doing amazing. This has been a pretty crazy start to 2021 already. I mean, here I was kind of going over my cameras that I wanted to see in this year, and then Sony has this mic drop moment with the A1 that just went live like two days ago. Absolutely crazy specs on that. 50 megapixels, stunning autofocus, 30 frames per second, shooting 4K 120. Yeah, ridiculous stuff. So we do have to wait a couple more weeks for that camera, but I've got it coming in soon and actually- Dan, you have a package that was just delivered. T today? It is at your door right now. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go see what that package is, but while I'm gone and coming back to get that, you guys need to check out squarespace.com. If you don't have a cool website yet, or maybe you have one, but you wanna add bookings or be able to sell products online, go ahead and check them out. I start with a template. You can add in new sections so easily. You can modify those, add pictures in. You can actually search for pictures on Squarespace. So it's really nice for being able to get started if you don't have anything ready to go yet. And you can even add animations and do crazy awesome stuff to really next level your website there. They have some absolutely insane tools for photographers and videographers, custom galleries. You can actually password protect them, share them with clients as you want. So go ahead and check them out, guys. It's completely free to get started on that. When you do want to go live with your site, use my coupon code learning cameras and you can go live with it today. This is it. This is our first camera of 2021 and it is absolutely insane starting the video off the right way right here. But this is what I want you guys to hear because... Thirty frames per second on this. It is absolutely amazing. So if this is what we're starting with, let's talk about what's next. So first up, let's talk Canon. And they've had an amazing year with like the R5 and R6 cameras that I absolutely love. They're insanely awesome and better than we really first expected them to be. So what Canon is missing is a mirrorless version of their 1DX Mark III. So I would love to see a high-end mirrorless version. The R1 is most likely on the way this year. Now, when this camera came out, I actually made a video because the best aspects to this camera were actually when it was in live view or mirrorless mode. So Canon would be stupid to ignore that even its best DSLR is actually better when functioning as a mirrorless camera, which is better eye autofocus and things like that in live view, better video in live view, and then even faster frame rates in the live view mode. So we will most likely see the R1 this year. Now, what I don't quite know is if Canon is gonna go crazy with the resolution or if they'll keep it a little bit more conservative, staying in the 20 megapixels, or if they'll go a little more all out for like that 45 megapixel range. I would allow them to do maybe 8K recording on them. However, one of the best parts about this camera is the buffer, being able to shoot thousands of images on this without that buffer filling up. In JPEG, I think you can shoot unlimited JPEGs on this at full resolution. So I think Canon's gonna stay a little bit more conservative because they don't want that buffer to go away. However, they now have the A1 to contend with, which is going to mean that they might wanna start pushing that resolution. Now, here's what we will see. Uh, besides that resolution bump, I do think that we'll see probably 6K or more recording. We will see 4K 120 frames per second easily, hopefully with less overheating than what's in the R5 and R6, because those can overheat on me. I also think that we'll see faster frame rates, way over 20 frames per second, which they can do now in that mirrorless mode. And then when you combine that with their new IBIS system and everything else, I think we are going to have an absolutely amazing camera. I do hope they shrink it a little bit from this, but I hope they really kind of stick true to a heavy duty, beefy body, which is gonna be good for all weather conditions, sports, balances out 600 millimeter lenses like crazy. So I know it's a little bit larger and larger than it needs to be, but I hope that they kind of stick with a similar design point from this rather than something smaller like the R5 or even Sony A1. Now I don't think that we will see a global shutter. I also don't think that we'll get the readout speeds that Sony's doing with like their A1 to allow for sports wildlife action with uh, electronic shutter. I think we're gonna have to stick to mechanical shutter on the Canon to get that. However, where it's going to excel is those mechanical shutter speeds, which will be way over 20 frames per second, while the A1 is limited to just 10 frames per second. 
And then we will also see that great ergonomics, great build quality, and also a buffer that will allow just tons of images before it fills up. Now, another camera that Canon has not yet come out with, which is a little surprising to me, is really any mirrorless APS-C camera. And that's because they have kind of their lower end M series cameras. However, I would love to see a 90D replacement or something like this with that complete mirrorless camera. And that is going to allow them to do some pretty crazy, th this is already a really good camera, 30 megapixels on it. I think with this in a mirrorless version, we would have 4K, 60, maybe even better. We would also be able to get 30 megapixels combined with IBIS and tremendous frame rates of like 12 to 14 seconds. I think that alone would make it one of my favorite mirrorless cameras, if not the best mirrorless camera on the market. The other one that's kind of interesting is the Canon RP. Uh, it's basically their entry level full frame camera. And it was a good camera, but it just never wowed anything because it is a little bit more entry level. It is now a few years old. It is possible that Canon could improve that with some pretty awesome specs from some of their other cameras like the R6 and put a lot of that into that smaller, uh, more entry level body. However, Canon could also just do a small refresh on it if they wanted to and reuse parts from their old parts bin. That's something that we could see, but I do think that would be a missed opportunity for them. So now let's talk Nikon. And Nikon's an interesting one because they technically had a good year last year with the Nikon Z6 II and Z7 II, which actually have some videos coming out on right now. And these are actually pretty good cameras. Honestly, I like them a lot. They do a lot of things and they compete very well with some of the other cameras out there. However, they're just not doing anything really crazy amazing. So since we have these two full frame cameras here, Nikon could go higher end and try and compete with like the A1 or Canon R1 or something like that with these high end sports action cameras. I don't think that they're ready for that right now. The D6 was honestly a very disappointing camera in a lot of ways, and I just don't think that Nikon with their autofocus system in its current state is quite ready for that. And I do think that if they did create a camera like that, it would probably not compete well with the other cameras and that would just be a bad look for them. What they could do, however, is come out with a new kind of more hybrid version of their D850. That is a camera that is really old right now, but was so loved. They came out with the D780, which was like a hybrid version of their D750, a more entry level full frame camera. Their high end D850 really needs a refresh. I don't think that they'll take it full mirrorless because that's the Z6 and Z7. And I don't think that some of the people were really satisfied with those cameras. So if they created a D850 with a higher resolution sensor, like 60 something megapixels to go against the R4, kept their much loved 3D autofocus system from the DSLR world, and then combine that with the live view mirrorless features that they have in a lot of their other cameras with dual card slots and high, high end DSLR. I think that would be a really good camera. They run the risk of looking kind of old just because in a world of like a lot of mirrorless cameras right now, they would be one of the few that are still releasing DSLRs. However, Honestly, their Z-mount lenses are still lacking, especially on the pro high-end series of lenses. So introducing one more DSLR might be the right thing to do for them. Now Nikon actually came out with an APS-C mirrorless camera called the Z50, which a lot of people are actually not using. And it's a, a pretty good camera, but they just didn't have the lenses to really make it look awesome. And it was a good camera, but it just didn't wow anyone in any real ways. And so what Nikon really needs to do this year is focus on creating a camera that makes you want it, that wows you, that makes you wanna switch systems to get it, makes you jealous. They are not doing it right now and I would really love to see them go all out on something this year. Now I also wanna talk about Panasonic because they're also in kind of a weird boat. They have a lot of new cameras out and some really amazing ones. Um, this is the S1H and it's absolutely stunning for video. The S series have been great cameras. However, they are still not going for phase detection autofocus and that means that basically in every test and every review, they fall apart when it comes to autofocus, especially in video or continuous. And that is a big problem for them and it's keeping a lot of people from jumping in on them and then also these new full frame cameras use kind of a new Leica mount system and the lenses can get a little bit more expensive and they don't have a whole lot of less expensive lenses to get people kind of early adopters into the system. 
what they really need to do is uh, the GH6. This is a camera we've been waiting on for a while. I thought we would see it already. We have not. They could really capitalize on that, go all out. I'm talking about features like the S3, but in a camera that costs $2,000 or less, thanks to that smaller sensor. I wanna see 6K recording, 4K 120. Uh, Panasonic already has the best IBIS system, amazing screens, ergonomics features. Combine all of that into a micro four thirds camera with a dual gain sensor and they will do so amazing with something like a GH6. I really wanna see that. As far as the full frame market, I think they're pretty good on cameras right now unless they add phase detection AF. And at that point, they will really take the camera into a completely new direction and hopefully make them a contender for like best cameras of the year. All right, so we need to mention Fujifilm and I actually don't even have their camera right now, but the X-T4 was really my favorite APS-C camera on the market. It is just an amazing crop sensor camera and it is the one to beat right now. And Fujifilm has a higher end X1H that has not been redesigned in a while. I actually thought we would see it last year. We did not, possibly COVID related. So this year we will see a high end APS-C camera from Fujifilm. And as the best APS-C crop sensor manufacturer right now, they could go all out with this. I wanna see amazing IBIS, higher resolution sensor, crazy frame rates, 4K 120, all of the features to really blow away the competition, keep them from catching up. The Fujifilm has that in their hands. They could do it. The X-T4 is already the leader and throwing in a couple hundred dollars more into their X1H. They could absolutely be the leader of that crop sensor market. Plus, in a world of full frame cameras, they really need to help justify and sell that crop sensor market. All right, so now Sony, and Sony is gonna have a hell of a year because they already have the Sony a7S III, which is amazing, it has great reviews on it. I'm actually recording this on that camera right now. I love it so much. However, they just announced the Sony A1, and already they are taking the market by storm, and most likely we will shortly see the Sony a7 IV, and that is a camera we've been waiting on for three years. The a7 III is actually showing its age right now, which is really commendable because honestly, the Nikon Z6, R6, um, these are cameras that have just come out this year, and they are still just barely beating the three-year-old a7 III in just a few areas, and on a lot of areas, the a3 is still winning. This year we will see the A4, the A7 IV, and this should bring a whole lot of upgrades with Sony's new autofocus updates that they have in a lot of other cameras. However, I am hoping to see the flip screen from the S3. I would love to see some improvements to that screen in general, but we will definitely have touch autofocus, hopefully their new menu system, possibly even higher resolution, and I would love to see better video. We'll definitely see 4K 60 on it. Hopefully 4K 120, at least in a crop mode, and possibly even a 6K or higher resolution mode uh, in that camera right there. It will have dual SD cards. That is going to be the full frame camera to beat. It will blow away everything else on the market, almost certainly. And just bringing that camera out will be a huge asset to Sony. They really need it this year because the a7 III is just almost three years old compared to some brand new cameras. And they shouldn't be losing in that space because they have the technology and the ability to blow everyone else away. So I think this will be a huge year for Sony in that full frame market. Now, Sony's also been doing really well in the crop sensor market. We have the A6100, the 6400, the 6600, which is really new as well. A ton of new cameras. However, none of them really captured that high-end sports and wildlife uh, photographer or videographer that wanted that crop sensor camera. We used to have a lot of cameras like that. Nikon has a D7500. Uh, Canon had their 7D Mark II series. And right now, only Fujifilm is kind of filling a little bit of that market, but even their higher end X1H is not here. I would love to see Sony compete again in that space with a high end APS-C camera. They could even make it a mini A1 or a mini A9 II with that super readout sensor and be able to do uh, live view electronic autofocus and live view electronic shutters at 20, 30 frames per second, really blow away that market if they wanted to. 
even if they kept it kind of like an A6600, but put it in an A7S III body, higher end build quality with a flip screen and a lot of big features on it and bigger video features, they could just blow away that market. It is a camera market that we used to see a ton of cameras in. It was very popular and we're just not seeing it a whole lot today. So hopefully Sony releases a high-end A6700, which will really compete very highly in that high-end crop sensor camera market. So let me know if there's a particular camera that you guys are excited about this year. A whole lot of stuff is coming up and maybe I missed something that you guys think is coming out. Hit me up below, say hi on social media. Hope you guys are doing amazing and I'll see you soon in a new video.